I think we're going live. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah, I can see the meter. What's up, Guitar Man 45? Everything sound good okay? Sound okay? Look okay? What's up, Joe? Strat CPO? JRG. Well, Jason says I'm live, and, and I believe him. What's up, Jay Shaft? Johnny R. <clears throat> yeah, I'm early today. I got an event tonight from like 6 to 10. So that kind of rules out the, the live show. So I was like, I was going to do it maybe at midnight. But I had to be up early this morning for something. My wife was like, you're, you're going to be wiped out. You got a whole day, <laughs> you know, you got a lot going on. I'm like, I do. She's like, I, I, you, you have a big period in the middle of the afternoon where it's, it's kind of quiet. I said, you know, it probably is better for my European subs anyway to do it in the middle of the day because, you know, it's like, what, 8 p.m. Central European time. You know, 7 p.m. Uh, UK time, Greenwich Mean Time. So, you know, <clears throat> the problem is, is that it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the East Coast of America, which, you know, most people are not in front of their computers at that time. But, you know, it's a sacrifice you make. Well, the pickups are hot. I had to turn the gain all the way down. They're wicked hot. They're hot shot. What's up, Straw Pete? What's up, Friedrich? What's up, Reek? What's up, Octopus? What's up, Keck? What's up, Tiger? Daryl, Bagel, Johnny, Simon, Tyler, Thunder Falcon, William, Ted, McCareless, Friedrich, 7 p.m. in Germany. Yeah, see? So you haven't you haven't done your changeover yet for uh, time, right? So that means that Greenwich Mean Time, it's really uh, only four hours difference. Because we've we've moved we've moved to our our summertime schedule. Why now? Because <clears throat> I got something going on tonight. And so if it wasn't now, it wasn't going to happen. And do I dare miss a week? It, it, um, it's officially a habit now. <laughs> Can't go missing a week. I think the blue is cool too. I agree. So the guy who uh, gave me this guitar speaker was uh over earlier he happened to be in town so he he had an we had a, a, an early morning not early morning but we had a morning hangout and he was here until a little afternoon and you know <clears throat> he's my age a little younger maybe five years younger but he remembers he's like dude can you imagine getting a guitar like that for 199 dollars Back in like 1988 when we were hanging out, 89, 90, I'm like, I know. And we did the inflation calculator. And um, at 199 today, it's the equivalent of $86 in 1988. And to get a guitar like that for the equivalent of about 86 bucks is, is mind-blowing. <laughs> With a carved top, um, it's it's got some... It's some pluses over the Kramer, without a doubt. Uh, but it's got some minuses over the Kramer, too. I was sort of stunned at, like, the Kramer does some things better. So I'll, I'll go over it in a big, big, uh, you know. Any plans for modding? Not right now. I think I'm going to leave it stock for now. I like to... You know, I like to see what can I get out of a, a stock instrument without having to throw money in it the day after you buy it, right? It's like, how, long, how much can you get out of it for value just for the money you already spent? So we'll see. Yeah, the JS-22. Exactly. Happy birthday, Steven Tyler. I didn't know that. So um, I'm sure you've all heard uh, the news about 
I always screw the name up, Taylor Hawking or Hawkings. I always screw that up. I don't know, is it Hawkins with an S at the end or Taylor Hawken? I, I, I'm terrible with that. You know, you know what I'm saying? They both sound right. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, what's stunning, what's stunning news, um, uh, to be so young. Um, I have to suspect without any prior, you know, indicators, um, it, it, it sounds like heart attack, right? Just sudden, sudden death like that. Um, it, it, that's, that's what it, it sounds like, but we won't know for weeks. Um, we may never know, but it, what a, you know, and I know people, especially young people, they're like, oh, well, you know, you did live to 50. Yeah. 50, 50 is pretty young. <clears throat> you know, my dad's still alive. He's got 38 years past 50. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying the dude would have lived to a hundred, but, but 50 is pretty friggin' young. So it was, uh, you know, it, it definitely, uh, you know, feels like a, a sudden and shocking loss. I mean, the outpouring for the, for his, uh, you know, for the news of his passing has just been extraordinary. That what you did to yours, Joe? You did locking tuners in a bone nut? I think the nut on this is one of the worst features. It's just, it's so thick. I think it really <clears throat> pinch. I've, I've lubed it to the nth degree, and it's it's still a little pinchy. Still a little bit. I don't even have the trim on it, because when I use the trim on this, unlike the Kramer, I can use, once I got the, the Kramer all, you know, sort of set up, I could use the trim, no problem at all. Um... The claw on this was copper plated. Copper plated claw. <laughs> I mean, come on. That's pretty crazy. Um, but one of the screws was a little screwed up. Um, in other words, sometimes, and I swear to God, it's like a robot that's screwing that in. It was a, uh, the, scraw, the, the, the claw got screwed in and it, it didn't, the, the claw wasn't up to the head of the screw. It got uh, caught up on some of the threads, so it was at an angle. But the second I started to turn it, whoop, clicked right off and went and went. I pulled the spring out anyway, though. Had too many springs with the three springs. And I, and I switched this from 9s to 10s. I found the strings that were on it were pretty bad. Um, they wore out very quickly. Uh, and when I say wear out, I mean like, I could feel flat spots on the underneath where they touch the, the frets. That's very, that's crappy strings that don't have a good metal makeup to them, right? They kind of disintegrate very quickly. So I put a new set of <clears throat> Ernie Ball 10s on it, and I thought it sounded great. I also um, mineral oiled the fretboard, which had almost like a little bit of a, like a powdery, like residue on it. I swear to God, it was maybe from the buffing process or whatever, but it, it really darkened up when I put the mineral oil on it. It was like night and day. You know, nice little, I mean, for $199. <laughs> You know, I mean, again, I, I say the same thing about the Kramer. I, I will say this. I think the Kramer, the trim arm works infinitely better than this one. I can't even use the trim arm on this without it. Uh, you know, like you just look at it wrong. That's why I changed the strings. I'm lubing everything up. I'm jamming lube into the, where the strings pass through the block, right? Because I'm saying, well, maybe they're getting caught up in there. Because I could not keep this thing in tune. When I used the tremolo, if I didn't use the tremolo, it stayed in tune just fine. But every time I used the trem, right, it was like, you know, avant-garde music city. <laughs> one, one use and, and you are in experimental territory with the micro tunings. Uh, so uh, I, I just pulled the tuning. And, and the thing is, sadly, I think it's actually a nicer tuning bar. It's a friction pop-in. 
right? Look at that. You know, it's not a screw in. It's like the PRS, right? It's a pop in. Or like some of the nicer Fender stuff. You know, on paper, it should be better than the Kramer, but the second you touch it, wonk, wonk, way out. <laughs> Think the body dings easy? I haven't had that happen yet, but it could be. It could be a thinner paint job. I, I think the paint job on the Kramer looks a little thicker, uh, certainly when you look at the edges of it, right, where it rounds over the corners, right? That feels like a thicker uh, blanket of paint on it. Uh, early show because I got something going on tonight. Oh, it's definitely the nut. I think the nut is too deep. I think it's too, the shelf is too long. And we were looking at it today. I was showing my friend, the Kramer. He's like, yeah, he goes, dude, just take a file and just like crank this one back a little bit, right? Just, you know, wear it away on the back with a little file, file it down and get a shorter shelf. I'm like, maybe it's plastic though. They're both plastic. Ben says he never used the bar in my wooden stand too neither. Yeah, I'm having trouble. And then the other thing is, is that we were looking at the way the strings come out of the nut. There's not a single string that comes out straight. On the Kramer, one of the strings, the middle string comes straight up. And then the other one starts to, to break away at different angles. None of these go in straight. They're all at an angle. So again, that shit, that does not bode well for tuning. That. That's a, a bit of a tuning killer. So I, I think that if you just treat it like a hardtail, I wound up really screwing the, the back uh, claw down and really, because I was like, maybe maybe it's not coming back up to the right place, right? I'm trying to, I'm trying to solve this because I want to make a video that says, I'm going to solve your JS22 tuning problems. And here it is. Don't use the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go see Judas Priest, 50 Years of Heavy Metal Tour at the Newark Prudential Center. Nice. I um, I saw Priest in, geez, I guess it had to be the, was it the 85, 86, somewhere around there? I remember um, we bought it, my, the singer in the band who was broke and much younger than us, like a good three or four younger years younger than us. Um <laughs> He was such a Priest fan, we bought him a ticket. We said, dude, we're, we're taking you to see Judas Priest. He was like, no way! <laughs> How's the knobs? The nice knobs. I'm going to say nice knobs. Again, and it, the only one at the same price point that I own is the Kramer. With the Kramer, you don't get a tone knob, and of course, because there's no second pickup, you don't get a three-way switch, right? So, in terms of, like, versatility, as long as you're never going to use the trim, this is probably a better option. Looks-wise, that's subjective, right? But um, my friend likes this a lot better than the Kramer because he liked the carved top on it. He thought it looked wicked hot. Uh, and like we were saying earlier, to get a guitar like this with this carved top, he's like, dude, that's like six ninety nine, seven ninety nine back in the day. He goes, they didn't make a carved top for that kind of money, you know. Uh, it, you, you, all the guitars were slab once you got under like five hundred bucks. It's just very expensive, 
right, to, to do that kind of work. Um, RGX had a little bit of a carve going on in a couple of spots, but even like the Yamaha RGX series, trying to be a little bit sort of metal back then. But even those were like $450, you know, in 1988, 1989. <laughs> it's a great guitar to play, though. Nice uh, playing neck. I'm going to say it's a touch wider than the Kramer, but thickness-wise, they're about the same. So in that sense, I almost feel like the Kramer neck feels a little smaller in the hand, but I could be wrong. i got to get the calipers on it to make be for sure. The difference could be very, very slight. Um, the body is thicker on this. We held them up to each other, and the body was a little thicker on this than on the Kramer. I think. Or was the Kramer thicker than this? No, I think this was thicker than the Kramer. And what else? The only thing I know is that the Kramer, after treating the nut and tightening everything down and, you know, and doing everything, I, I can get it to stay in reasonable tune, even using the bar. Like, even, you know, medium, light to medium use on the bar, as long as you're not dive bombing like crazy. It stays in pretty good tune. Uh, this, if you look at the trim the wrong way, it goes out of tune. So I got the trim bar out. This guitar was 199. That's why we were saying like earlier, like in 1988, that's the equivalent of about $85. <laughs> and you're walking to the store and go, yeah, in 1988, and going, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go with the Jackson for 85. And walking out with this, you can't even be serious. And yeah, those are countersunk plastics in the back. Right? You can't get countersunk plastics on a lot of PRS guitars right now. They won't do it. Even Music Man does overlay instead of countersunk. And even though, like, my, like uh, and I, I give him credit, Henning complains about it all the time. He's like, dude, you're routing it on a CNC machine. Just enter the code for the, to sync the plastics. But they won't. they won't do it. So Delencio said he had a problem with some of the inlays, huh? I haven't had that. I, I certainly haven't felt it. And you know what? When I had the strings off, I went over the whole board. No. I, no, they all look pretty flush. And quite frankly, pretty tight. Um, this guitar is made in China. The Kramer is made in Indonesia. So clearly different factories for both of those builds. I'm live now because I'm busy later. So it was either now or never. And I chose now. Because, you know, we're trying to do it every week. Uh, what's the cheapest guitar you'd recommend as an alternative to... A Gibson Les Paul Epi, I'd go Epi, because this Epi Les Paul here, you know, um, it, it it's very it's it's a tight build, it really is. It's an it's a these are all tight builds, quite frankly. Um, manufacturing has just come so long, uh, you know, so far in, in such a short period of time. It, it's it's so far along than where it was even ten years ago. You know, the Epi. In fact, I remember when I first got one of my Chinese LPs, I compared it to a used Epi at Daddy's, and I thought the used Epi at Daddy's looked worse. I thought the binding was sloppier. 
I just thought all around the guitar wasn't nearly as nice. Uh, this is not only as nice, it's much better than, you know, than my, my Chinese copy. It's not even close. This is a much better build. The, um, the binding is much tighter. Everything is, again, the whole spec from head to toe, they have just really tightened the screws, I think, on their, their, you know, their manufacturing process because it's, it's clean. It, it's friggin' clean. It, 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 again, look at that gold top Harley Benton I had. Underneath the back of the neck was clearly like a dent in the wood where it was like hit with something and there's a dent. But you can't feel it. You can only see it because they just added enough clear. <laughs> you, you couldn't feel it. You could see the dent. But the top was like glass, but underneath you could see this, like, clearly it had been whacked with something, like, on, a, on an edge and, and put, like, a big crease dent in the back of the neck. Eh, can't feel it, you're fine, <laughs> right? So, you, you give that level of quality, it's about $150, I think that guitar was, right? About $150, $160, dollars very inexpensive. Yeah, I, you got to check your expectations, I think, a little bit. <laughs> What's up, Terry? Exactly, just they just drowned it in clear. Exactly, James. CNC machining, and the guy from PRS was talking about it, and he said... We have, we have achieved what was only achievable in the metal industry. We have metal level of tolerances where the metal guys have been working on, you know, thousands of an inch for many years. But we wouldn't, wood guys were never like that. But now the wood guys, I'm sure the metal guys are even that much further along with computerization and lasers and being able to see exactly where something is, right, being cut away in the sides of something, right? Their tolerances are getting even tighter. But the wood tolerances were finally where, like, metal was, you know, 10 or 15 years prior. What's up, George? What's up, Thomas? They're going to get more European people today, because... Like, Austria... A little bit easier to to come on uh, when it's uh, seven o'clock at night than than when it's uh, well really like one a.m. Right? Adam says he's got a 2020 JS22 Dinky Seven. I can't do the seven strings. It's all right. Yeah. I, I get to keep this one. He was here earlier today, and he's like, yeah, I'm going to get one. I'm like, dude, why don't you just take this one? He's like, nah, it's a gift. But he was he was uh, impressed. What he He's a Kramer guy, and so he saw the video where it was down between, I think, this guitar and the Kramer, and uh, I like the two blue metallic guitars. I would have went with this one. Because I felt like the extra pickup, right, um, and three-way switch would have been a, a better value at the, at, at, again, identically priced. But this was out of stock, and so I went with the, I, I went with the Kramer, which has turned out to be a shockingly good guitar at the one ninety nine price point, and definitely stays in better tune than this guitar. Um, so there's a trade off, right? Uh, one knob, one pickup on the Kramer, but it stays in tune pretty well. And, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, what was I going to say? Um, even when you're using the trim arm, uh, this guitar, you get the extra pickup, you know, a three-way switch and a, and a tone knob, but it's hard to keep this thing in tune. And it's impossible when you use the trim arm. One use of the trim arm, and this thing is all out of whack. And I have literally spent 
like hours trying to brought it over on the bench. I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. I got a little, I'm trying all these little things to try and lube it all up. I've got like two or three different types of lube in there. <laughs> I'm like, one of these is going to be the magic formula. And, uh, and no, not really. I, I, you know, Ben, I don't know. Maybe front to back, it might be a little thinner, but it feels like it's a tiny bit wider. But I, I'm not positive. I'd have to, I got to put the calipers on it. I feel like this might be like, you know, a, a, just a thousandth of an inch, you know, thinner front to back, but maybe a thousandth of an inch, you know, thicker side to side. Um, it definitely is a different, that feels a little more vintage, a little round. This is flatter on the back much flatter you know uh the kramer is definitely a rounder back a more classic style feel to it kramer's again my friend was over he was he played both of them today you know picked them up and he was like it was wow this kramer's actually pretty nice i was i told you yeah it, you know not a not a not, not a slouch by any means um they both have their pluses and minuses um the look part, that's completely subjective. One person will like one look, the maple, you know, with the one color and the more rounded look versus, you know, the, it's not ebony, but it kind of looks like ebony. Uh, you know, with the, some people will hate the, 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 you know, the shark tooth inlays or whatever they call those, the Dorito, Dorito inlays. It feels like it could be a problem with, uh, you know, with Frito-Lay, but, uh, you know, and the, the, the round on the Kramer versus the, the, the pointy, again, these are style. There's no accounting for that. What you can account for is how many pickups does it have a tone knob? Is there a three way switch, right? Does it have a tremolo? Or is it a hard tail? So you could almost treat this as like a hard tail. Cause damn, you cannot keep it in tune once you use the trim. So it's almost like hard tail versus trim. Two pickups versus one pickup, you know. And the binding, again, I, I kind of like the binding. I think the binding looks freaking awesome. Again, that it's like an RG. This kind of, the neck sort of reminds me of the old RG 760, 770, 750, 760, 770, right? Shark tooth inlay with the binding on the neck. Those guitars were like a thousand bucks in 1988. 1989, which is uh, a bit of money now. Tony says replace the tuners. He has a Jackson, and he says the talk the stock tuners are total junk. Yeah, that could be a. I think I think the Wilkinsons. I think Wilkinson has a um, what do they call that? Like a the lower lower left offset or something, right? Um. I think Wilkinson make ones that, that, that drop right in with it. You don't have to make any mods. I don't want to mod it. <clears throat> mm, that is good. Good coffee there, hot shot. <laughs> It is a bit of really racks effect, but I got uh, I got something going on tonight, and I didn't want to skip the week, you know. Sure, I could have just blown it off, but um, the OCD in me said no. <laughs> See, this is a sound you can't get with the Kramer. Which is the neck pickup. Or going like this. Because there's no tone knob, right? So during last week's live show, I got a copyright claim. I'm like, what? What did I play that you I got a copyright claim? 
And they're like, it's this song by this band, a song I never heard of by a band I never heard of. And they're like, well, they give you the timestamp. And I'm, uh, I'm going to. It's like, dude, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not by your band. <laughs> that's, that's by a band called Kiss. So I put a copyright claim. I said, uh, no, never heard of your band. And I, uh. Still sounds out, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, see, the, these guys identify it more readily. So I, I filed a claim and basically said, yeah, uh, I'm not playing your song. I'm playing a chromatic riff on the guitar. Any any uh, resemblance to the song you claim it is is purely coincidental. It's nice to be able to go back to that um, neck pickup. I know, right? Maybe Anthrax can put a claim in too. <laughs> did Anthrax cover uh, Parasite or did they cover She? Or maybe both. Um, there's a wonderful cover of She out there. That's just great. Slip inside your, your mind. F. A minor. Probably by probably doing that, even though they mark it as G. <laughs> right. F major. F minor, classic turnaround. I don't really know much crocus. Was, there were so many songs out there that were a very similar riff. Kind of like. Yeah, exactly. The Beatles turn around. Right. Um, used by so many, you know. That minor. <laughs> Liam's new tune is a banger. Did, did he play that on Stern recently? I want to say like maybe a couple of years ago. He did Wonderwall and it got pulled. You wonder what happened there.
then probably. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that, that big turnaround. Major to minor is a big thing. Um, there's a few tunes out there that do that. I'm trying to, I'm racking my brain right now, but like most attempts, it's, it's coming up blank. I don't know, sad but true. How many years did you practice before you could shred? Well, the coming this September, it'll be 50 years playing guitar. I'm going to say 45. How's that for hope? <laughs> I still can't really shred. Not like the guys who get the... You know, they can really get going. I've never been able to really do that. This is nearly. What time is it where you're at? It's 7:40 here. Hey, you all right, Boo? Oh, I'm worried about you. You just got to um, do that once in a while, a little, little squeal. Oh, look who's here. It's Speaker, a.k.a. Moneybags, who dropped a whopping buck 99, bro. You know what? I, I'm going to say it doesn't even look that good in the color because the, I almost want to say that it's like, it, it's, it's almost like making it a little too bright, <clears throat> right? It, it's like a little washed out, right? It's like feast or famine. It's like either too bright or too dark. That's probably not too bad. You got to get it on like a, on like a, like, like there or something. I don't know. Like there. There, maybe there. Do it. Want too many hits this morning? Yeah, dude. I'm just a friend to friend. Slow down a little bit. We're all worried about you, man. Yeah, it's kind of a smaller body. It's like a, is it a three quarter inch? I thought it was seven eighths. I mean, I'm no math magician, but <clears throat> I thought the dinky was seven eighths, not three quarter. Three quarters, actually, that's quite a bit off. I think it's an eighth smaller, not a quarter. Yeah, Spencer, we were talking about that. The problem with the, the problem with the, I would go with black too, but they don't make it gloss. And the satin, I feel like wherever my arm touches, 
right? Like where my fingers touch underneath here and where my arm touches on the corner. <clears throat> it works it from satin to like semi-gloss in like six months. And there's ne you're never getting that back to satin again, right? It, it gets these like sort of like polished spots on those satin finishes. That's why, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> Uh, do I have it? How do I have the pickup set? Um, I didn't. I didn't adjust them. I left them as they were out of the. I left them as they were out of the. Uh, just out of the, you know, out of the box. That's how you really test a guitar. You, you know, just plug it in and go. All right. It came from Sweetwater, so I'm assuming there was a, me a meticulous oversweep of all the fine points of this guitar before shipping to me. Or not. <laughs> Boris says, um, my Martin is, is satin, or Satan, <laughs> but shiny where you play. Yeah, exactly. Actually, I can, I can play Hey Joe. The problem is, is that that's, that's, that's the fast way to demonetization. That's why when I, a lot of people are like, play this song, play that song. I'm like, you realize those are copyrighted songs that no one listens to them. Software matches the... I once time played a chord. I swear to God, this chord, I'm not going to play the chord. It's almost owned by friggin' Cheap Trick. Because the second they hear that, they're like, oh, you're, you're, you're copying um, Surrender. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm playing a, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm playing a, um, you know, a, a very common chord. I'll, I'll do a different version of it where you, you take the chord like A and you put, you put B in the bass. Right. So, I mean, that's a that's a very very old trick. And uh, but no, I, you you play that chord and you get a little note saying, "Oh, we we see you're attempting a cover of Surrender." No, I'm not. I'm no, I'm not. <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, great, great." So you're now revenue sharing with the record company in the songwriting holder. Great, great. So as YouTube, you know, as you know, we take 45%. And now the remaining is being split up uh, four ways. I'm like, great, great. Uh, oh, that's good. That's good coffee. <laughs> Are you going to try the Meteora? I want to. Call me Fender. Call me. Guys, I've been a Fender user since 1981. I, I'd promote I'd promote Fender if they'd have me. You know, I didn't get the candy. I wonder if it's out in the... I didn't see the candy. I wonder if the uh, candy is in the uh, out in the box, and I never I never found it. What's up, Sean? I know, Ian. That's my, that was my argument. You can't copyright a chord. And they're like, mm, you kind of played it in a certain rhythm, and you kind of honked on it for a certain amount of time. The thing is, is that you're not talking with anybody. You say, no, I'm not. I'm just playing a chord. No one even looks at that. They, don't, they literally don't even look at that. The only time they look at it is if when you reply, I have a license, and here's my license, which I would do when I, I had subscribed to this service you got as a part of the service, 
access to all these royalty-free backing tracks, right? And so, and like background music, right? So you can do like, um, you know, uh, you know, the intro to this or the intro to that, and they would they would have all the all the uh, like a snazzy like, you know, intro and outro and all this stuff. Um, and they would get flagged, and I would have to go there and say, no, 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 no. I had subscribed to like this audio service and they granted me a perpetual license, even if my subscription ran out, which it's run out, but I downloaded that as a part of my subscription and they said it would be good forever. And they almost always get wiped out. It takes about a week, a week and a half. And they're like, nope, the, the license holder agrees with you and they have released their claim upon the product on your video. Good news. They've, re they've relinquished their claim. That's very rare. The only time it happens is when you say, I have a license. Um, other than that, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's pretty much a waste of time to even file a, a dispute. Keurig man or full pot? Oh, full pot. Uh, Keurigs, um, they're expensive, right? If you looked at the per cup cost, very expensive. And, you know, you're just filling landfills with, with, with plastic, you know. I'm drinking a couple of cups of coffee a day. Two or three plastic cups a day? Nah, nah. In fact, I remember I was getting my hair cut down at Bob the Baba, who has long since passed away. But uh, it's probably like the early 2000s, late, late 90s, early 2000s. And, uh, and they had a story in the paper, in the newspaper. You know, you're sitting there waiting to get your hair cut. And there's like a, a story in the paper. They had a big graphic, right? Big two-page spread. You know, what does it cost to drink coffee for a year? And they, they broke it down. And I want to say... Um, and they, they went on the average of 2.5 cups of coffee a day and Starbucks, it was like something like $1,800 a year. And I want to say Dunkin' Donuts was like 1200 and something dollars a year. And to brew your own pot at home, if you ground your own beans and made your own coffee it was like two hundred and fifty dollars a year so there's that <laughs> now it's like what Bob the Baba. Hey, what's up, Quentin? What's a Baba? It's the guy next to the place that sells pizza. Yeah, I don't really do the caramel. My wife will get that. She'll get the Starbucks, like, caramel creamer and stuff, but I, I hate that stuff. <laughs> Oh, we grind our own coffee. You can't buy it pre-ground. You can't buy it pre-ground. Um, it, 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 it's too stale. It's just way too stale. In fact, um, I remember getting rock and roast. 
This was put out by Joey Kramer from Aerosmith, right? I'm like rock and roaster. And I got it and I brought it home. And the, the bag was so airtight, I didn't realize it was pre ground. I opened it up and I go, oh, ground coffee? Went right back. I was like, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think so, dude. I don't think so. I'm not even going to try it. <laughs> I, I am not even remotely interested in this coffee. <laughs> See, from Boston, I bought Starbucks Komodo Dragon the other day. You have to try it. It's really good. Has, has anyone, I haven't tried that. Has anyone tried the nitro brew, right? Isn't that when they inject the coffee? It's a cold coffee, and they inject it with, like, liquid nitrogen, and it makes it, it somehow sweetens the coffee through the freezing or semi-freezing process. I'm not really sure. I've never had one, but i got to admit, they, they look kind of, it kind of looks like a Guinness stout, right, with a big, foamy head on the top and it, that's from the coffee in a in a in a dark as night brew you know like like a guinness <laughs> best uh ground coffee starbucks true north i never i never again i can't get it. if they if they would sell it in beans i would i would get it Yeah, nice color on the Jackson, right? right? This is what, you know, two nights out for dinner gets you. Assuming you're spending for a family of four about a hundred bucks. <laughs> All right, so Tiger Palmer says he's had the canned Starbucks Nitro, the canned one, and it wasn't good. So you wonder if there's a flavor difference if you get it made for you at the counter versus the canned one. But it's good to know that you didn't think the canned one was good. Quentin Folgers. We were almost friends, dude. We were almost friends. Folgers, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got to grind your own coffee. Even then, even then, once you open the bag of beans, those last couple of pots of that, that bag of beans, the, the beans get... They go from a glossy, oily finish to a matte finish. That's the oil. Just the terps. You know what I'm talking about, uh, <laughs> friggin' uh, Ben. It's all about the terps, bro. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Rip Taylor Hawkins. Just shocking. Shocking. Too much work. <laughs> yeah. Early in the morning, yeah. Good day, Vancouver I uh, Island. Yeah, I'm early today. I am. I would say, too, Speaker, the Kramer and the Jackson, totally giggable. We were talking about that earlier because we were in a band together for a little bit. I said, you know, well, one of us walk out with the Kramer. The other guy walks out with the, you know, with the Jackson. <laughs> Perfectly uh, giggable. And not ironically, like a lot of alt bands do. <laughs> In other words, they walk out with some Sears guitar because you know you can't you can't give a shit. You can't give too many shits. Uh, we've had Pete's because uh, Costco will get it once in a while. Pete's is pretty good, but it's not quite as strong as I like it. They're not a uh, like a really strong French, but they're not quite as weak as like a as like a medium roast Colombian. They're they're somewhere in between. <laughs> it really is exactly. 
<laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. It's all about the Terps. Ian says he needs to invest in a grinder and a coffee machine. You know what? It really does lower your annual cost by an incredible amount. But I'll tell you this much. Getting the right grinder makes a huge difference. Do not get the one where you stick the beans in and it's got a spinny blade. They're very inconsistent. And they actually heat the coffee up as a part of the crush, the, the, the whipping process there, the blending, right? It's, it's basically like an upside-down blender. Much, much better is what they as a burr grinder where it goes down and it gets crushed between a couple of things that have like those spikes on them, you know, and it's basically burrs, right? A burred wheel. Those grind the coffee. And all you do when you set the level is you're making those two wheels that, that grind them a, a, a farther apart or closer together. The closer together, the more powdery it is. And the farther apart, the more granular it is. But it's extremely consistent, and it doesn't build up a you know a ton of heat as it does it because the heat will screw the oils up in the coffee. Dude, I've been through this. I've been drinking coffee for a long time now, a good twenty five years straight. And uh, the 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 burr grinder is is a complete necessity. Now it used to be you had to spend crazy money, and I spent about one hundred and twenty bucks. To get a burr grinder, and you had to go to like Starbucks to get it. But now I think uh, Cuisinart, Cuisinart, they make one. Uh, and uh, who else? Um, we got one right at, the, right at the start of the pandemic. We had an amazing, massive crisis. The, the grinder stopped working. Costco was out. Everybody was closed. You couldn't get that Cuisinart to save your life. And we got this alt brand for, and it wasn't cheap. It was like a $55 friggin' grinder and a, a tiny, and we got it. I was like, oh my God, we are just getting raped here at the start of the pandemic. It's still going strong. It does a great job. It's like some no name brand I got off of friggin' Amazon. Oh, thanks, Scott. Quick question Is the Jackson neck carve more like the Ibanez Wizard or more like the 80 Charvels? Um,. I would say it's a little closer to the wizard. It's not quite as thin as the wizard. Nothing is, all right? The wizard really took it to an extreme. Um, so I wouldn't say it's quite that thin, but it, 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 it's pretty thin. And I feel like the Charvel neck is a little rounder. The Charvel's closer to the Kramer, right? A little bit more of a cheeky bum than a flat ass. Um, even though they're small... It's the, it's the, it's the curve. This feels more, that feels more D-shaped. They don't even give it a shape. They call it the shred neck. They're like neck style shred. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that, that tells me nothing. Uh, but I would say um, this is probably more like wizard two, right? Which is a little thicker than wizard um, or ultra. Right, which is another one that's a little thicker than uh, that, but the ultra feels a little wider. I don't think this is nearly as wide. I think the I think the ultra is uh, probably a half a millimeter or a tenth of a millimeter wider. Um, and you can feel that difference. A one millimeter difference, believe it, believe me, is a friggin' huge. You don't believe it. I, I, again, there's a great video done by uh, the captain. Right, Lee Anderson, who they were going through these two guitars, and they they clear they were like this one is much much thicker, and when they put the caliper on it, the difference between the two necks was one millimeter, and they could they were like shocked because it really does it makes that it really does make a big difference. Yeah, tenth of a mil, about about tenth of a mil. So what's that uh? Uh, what's after mill? I'm always not deck. Uh, so, uh, so there's micro. There's I never get those right. Yeah, it's like a pita meter. <laughs> it's like one trillionth of a meter. Yeah, 
Yeah, micro, micro's the next one. Couple of, a couple of microns off. Which one am I on? I'm on. That's a dual heavy rig. That was pretty good. That's the other one I use a lot. It's stereo, but the, it's only got a single rig, so it's it's funny how it sounds more centered. Then, of course. And then, of course, the, the Marshall one. Do, do, do. And then we can go. Uh, doesn't sound right. This one's Chinese made. See that? I just corrected that with my finger. It's because these frets are tall. Both pickups. So there's neck, both. It's almost a little more compressed. Well, you know what? This would be a good test. So we have it on both, right? So let me see. All right. Four coils. In other words, when they put them together, they don't um, they don't cut two of the coils. 
It's still a four, it's that's four coils. <laughs> Tough one. Eh, 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 eh. A waka, a waka, 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 waka. Um, what else we got? What else we got here? Do 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 do. <laughs> Kind of chorusy. Do 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 do. We'll go back up. That's that dual heavy rig. Silver Jubilee. Then the YJF. <laughs> that one I think I'm sticking there very Van Halen ish <laughs> Do I prefer the Kramer or the Jackson pickup? It's kind of a push between the two. I wouldn't say either one of them is a crazy good pickup. I might like the Jackson one a, a touch more. But it might be just, a, it sounds like, you got to remember, the, the Kramer one's at a little bit of an angle. And that's going to move it a little bit farther away, away from the bridge, give it a little bit different tone. Um, I, I do like the Kramer a lot. And I, it's, t tuning stability-wise, there's no contest. The Kramer is a much more stable guitar tuning wise that's why i don't have the the trem arm on this it's uh it, it it's instant <laughs> <laughs> Ceramic or El Nico preference? I like El Nico's, without a doubt. C ceramics have their place, but uh, there's something about this. It's something, I like the more vintage El Nico. El Nico. In fact, I like El Nico 5s. Not to put too fine a point on it. Yeah. one come they, they don't really seem to ever bother me. They're one of the few places I, I almost never get a claim, ever. The only time I do is when I use their actual backing track. Like if I use Van Halen, I play over Van Halen, they come right after me. They're like, no. In fact, they block the audio. But they don't do it when I just play the riffs. 
doesn't it? Yeah, over loud. They do sound good. I look at the stale stats. The sales stats, they always jump up. And Steve does a video. Kramer sold real well over the past few months. Actually, uh, they sold out about a week, maybe two weeks after I made that video. I remember, I made two videos. One on the, the buying and the unboxing, and then the other one which took a while because I had to order it, wait till it came in, and then unbox it, and then put all the video together. And then I did the one on the, you know, setting it up and getting the performance. And uh, I'd say about maybe 10 days after that second video, about two weeks after the first video, uh, they were sold out. They've been sold out across the board. So I'm just saying, if you are going to get a Jackson, use the link, Luke. Use the link. <laughs> because if I sell 1,000 of these, I get a shiny nickel. Actually, uh, James, I do get a commission. It's not a very big commission. It's a rather small commission. But I do get a tiny commission, uh, but you got to use the link to buy it. If you don't use the link, then I get nothing. So, um, you know. And the, the other thing is, is they, they don't tell you what you sell. And because the amount is so small, um, you don't know where it comes from, right? Because it's such a small percentage, you know, so you earned... You know, $33 in a month. Where did that come from? You know? Exactly. Use the link. That's always a good one. Did you use the link when you bought your Kramer? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah, mentioning it, see, that's, we, in fact, we talk about this as YouTubers. We, we basically say the problem with Sweetwater is that most people just call their rep, and the rep is taking the commission then, right? The rep takes the commission, not us. So even if you mention us or try to, it won't work. You've got you to go through and use actually the link, the affiliate link, and then it, um, it gets tallied actually by a completely outside firm. And they, they work, they tally it all up. And then there's a huge lag time between when you make the sale and you actually get paid because they build in a big time for returns, right? You got to you gotta go past the return period. So um, that that's where I can, hey, it's all a big weight. <laughs> and like I said, the amount of money is, is pretty tiny. You, you got to, you know, I'd need like a million dollars in sales to make any decent cash. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of the Pacer Classics from 2011, 2010, something like that. Okay. 
can't pick up the Glary. <laughs> uh, I don't own a Glary. Do I have a Glary? I don't think I ever got a Glary. I wasn't on their list. I had the, the Eart, which is actually a pretty good guitar. Uh, the Art, Eart, Eart, Ear, Art, E, Art. I think dinky means that the body is a seven eighths. Actually, I don't think it. I think it was a slightly smaller body. And and the bolt on. And the bolt on. <laughs> I think I like El Nico fives better. Iarte. That was my next guess. <laughs> say people are boycotting Holly Benton because of the commission they're giving. Yeah, they don't. They're, I think, actually a tiny bit better. And don't forget, it's in euros. And the euro is a little stronger than the dollar. So that the, the Toman one actually isn't that bad. The one that really sucked was Amazon. The Amazon affiliate link. They're like, we're giving you 7%. We're giving you 6%. The start of the pandemic. We're going three <laughs> like uh they went from seven to six to three they're like you know what people are buying stuff anyway we don't we don't need you to it's just needless money going out <laughs> Just got home from a three-hour drive. Actually, that was a five-hour drive. You're in a... <laughs> That's why my show is on. <laughs> Mr. Jackson, better than the Kramer Beretta Special. Well, certainly not at staying in tune. I think the Beretta... Especially when you use the whammy bar, um, is much much better at staying in tune. Uh, this this guitar just can't stay in tune once you use the bar. And again, I think it's because of the way the strings break over the nut. No, there's not a single one that's straight. They all break at an angle. At least the Kramer, one of the strings, I think it's the D string or the G string, is straight, and the rest, you know, start to break away at, at different angles. <sighs> This is, uh, and it could be the bridge too. The, you got to remember the Kramer is a six screw bridge, right? Like a, like a, you know, classic Strat. Um, this is a two pointer. You know, and I, I don't know. I, I would think this would be staying better tuned, but, but it doesn't. And I, I put uh, cotton swabs with lube into where the strings pull through, all through the, the saddles, all through here. You know, I, I really went to town because I said, oh, I'm going to fix this and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to show up uh, online and everyone's going to welcome me like a hero because I fixed the tuning problem on the Jackson. And yeah, I, I, I couldn't get it done. I could, I, unlike the, the Beretta. So the Beretta, you sacrifice the pickup, the tone knob and a three way switch. Right. Right. They, there's definitely a difference there with the binding, if that's a visual thing or the, the in, big inlays. Right. Again, that, that's hard to account for. But what you can't account for is pickups, right? switches, knobs, right? Um, clearly, this is a better proposition in, in terms of that, but 
if you wanted the guitar to stay in tune and use the whammy bar, then the Kramer is your only option because this it just won't stay in tune. You know, it, it, yeah, the plastic nut. They both have plastic nuts, but the Kramer one is slopes back. In other words, the, the top of it, the bottom is thick, but then as it goes up, the back slopes in, and there's only a very small shelf area where the actual string hits. This one is much larger shelf, right, much deeper, and that's the problem. So I think cutting a new, like, bone nut for this would work, but... You know how much it would cost to have a bone nut put on this guitar, on this $200 guitar? Oh, about 100 bucks. <laughs> they have one cut in shape and put one in. You start to say, huh, maybe, maybe I have all these guitars with Floyd Roses, and maybe I don't need to have this guitar have a, just treat it like a hardtail. <laughs> They're both plastic knots. There's, there's no like tusk knot or anything like that. Does the Kramer stay in after abusive whammy? No. In fact, you, it's unreasonable to expect that. Really, the only one that stays in tune with really abusive stuff is a Floyd Rose, a clamped system. But you know what? I would say low to moderate use. It stays in tune pretty damn good. Um, this one, if you touch it at all, it is just right out. You cannot move the bridge one bit or you are just completely out every single time. And uh, it, it's, it, it, it really is frustrating. I Trust me, I tried for hours to get this thing going and I just could not. Uh, the Kramer, I tried for a little bit to get going and at the end of it, I felt it was like, you know, like 90% of the way there. If a Floyd Rose is 100%, you know, that's probably like 80%, you know, 85%. This is like 0 0.0. <laughs> Hello, Dublin. Thank you. a guitar home that you immediately regretted buying uh, I don't know about immediately but yeah I did a trade for a Strat for an ESP and uh, I should have just kept the Strat in fact that Strat would probably be worth a lot more than that ESP because uh, it was a first run out of the new Corona factory I got it in like 86 that would have been 86 86, 87, something like that. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where you fall in love with a guitar and then you want to do a deal and then you, you, you try and make it happen and then the next thing you know, it happens and you're like, oh, what am I thinking? You know? Um, I, I very rare, what would happen, you know, that's the benefit of working in the music store for so long. What happens is, is that when you work there long enough, you realize that you fall in and out of love pretty quickly with guitars. And I remember we did get like some new, like very extremely rare. I remember we got in this extremely rare. We got two of them in. Um, USA made Ibanez guitars neck through. IBZ USA. Like real, like, I, like Ibanez USA on the headstock. And they were like seven ninety nine, eight nine. They weren't very expensive, you know, nine ninety nine, you know. And uh, I was like, just absolutely saying, you, you know, you should just buy one of these. You should just get one now. Probably worth something today, but 
I realized that I, I just didn't like the neck on one of them. I was like, what are you doing? You're forcing yourself into this guitar. You don't even really like it. You know, it's like, what? You know, the I tell you, when I bought that green Strat and I got it home, even though I got it for short money, I was a little worried that it was a parts caster and I really got screwed. I did have a little heart-sinking moment with that guitar, but then once I pulled it apart and I realized that the parts are all, you know, Fender, you know, American Vintage Reissue, and, you know, uh, their top lacquer and quality stuff, and, you know, it was custom shop pickups, I was like, oh, no, no, you, you, it was a score. You, you totally scored with this thing. But... There was a little bit there where I was like, oh, dude, you might have just got taken because um, it wasn't jiving with any other guitar that I could see out there and because it was a parts caster. But the the neck alone, that 59 neck, the day I got that guitar, one of those necks had sold for $25 more than I paid for the whole guitar with a case. So I feel like I still worked out. <laughs> Exactly, guitars are meant to be bought, not sold, but once in a while you gotta sell some, or else you're just stripping over them. shipped in book tape and immediately regretted it. I remember that. <laughs> Here's a rock riff. I, I can't even play it as bad, yeah. <laughs> oh God, that was so bad. God, we'll never... You never forget. That was as bad as is, is that for my speaker. One of those life, those life moments. Was it coming lefty? I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, very chromatic. This is what it sounds like to work in a music store. You're like, oh, I'm going to work in a music store. Then all day you're listening to... Tried doing that for 10 years. <laughs> uh, it's been my favorite new guitar amp lately. Well, my favorite new guitar has been this one, at least for the last 24 hours or so. Uh, the amps, I don't really play through a lot of amps. I mainly play through the software. And lately, I've been this patch, a couple other patches. <laughs> Now you think earplugs, but you still got to answer the phone. <laughs> you take a G chord, then do it up a fret. Oh God, I used to know a guitar player like that. I used to be like, I used to, I just wrote a song. I go, okay, let me sh show it to me. Go like. I go, dude, you're taking a C chord and moving it up a step. He goes, yeah, I tried that. I thought it sounded awesome. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Got anything else going on there? He was like, no, that's pretty much the whole song. And it goes. 
goes nowhere. I have a new song. There you go. You know that song? <laughs> I know he's going to put me in a copyright strike. Hello, Grease. It's on your greatest hits album, yeah. Yeah, no show tonight at the normal time. My, um, my, uh, that normal time slot is, 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 is taken up tonight, but, you know, maybe if I sneak a nap in, uh, I'll do a really super late one, but I don't know. I was up pretty early. Like my wife said, she's like, you really think you're going to do it? Cause I, the original plan was not to do it at seven, but to do it at like midnight. Right. She's like, you really want to do a midnight show? being up so early and having all that you got to do today. And I was like, you know, you're making a good point. She's like, I'm going to be out all afternoon. Just, just do it in the afternoon. I'm like, you're making a good point right now. Besides the tuning, do you like it more than the Beretta? Um, I don't know. I don't know that I like it better. I think they're different guitars. Certainly the neck shape is a little different. You know? You know, like, you know how that goes. Your latest girlfriend's always the hottest one. Right? Until she doesn't stay in tune well. What's that saying, right? There's a guy who's about to get it on with this chick. He's like, she had terrible breath, but you don't throw out a Rolls Royce because it got a dent in it. Still on seven nine tonight? No. This is this is the show for that show.
middle section. Pen, I don't know it off the top of my head right now. I'd have to look at look at it again. Yeah, the weather is definitely warming up here. What do we? I mean, we've had, we had a little cold spell, tiny bit, but not too bad. It's been. You know what? When I went in the attic the other day, the vent fan was on. That's first time that's been on since the fall. You know you're in trouble when the vent fan is on. That means the the thermostat in the uh, loft is set to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That means it was 90 degrees Fahrenheit in the loft up there, the crawl space. That's not good. The do do do. 55 degrees out right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compound, compound radius. Um, fourteen to sixteen, I think, or is it twelve to sixteen? I thought it was fourteen to sixteen. <laughs> See what's your rock ripping up in the house? You think that riff is wrong for Crazy Train? That's not it. Yeah, but he plays the A, what, here? Fifth fret here, it's the same note. No open A, fifth fret A, it's, it's the same note, dude. You know? It's like playing. Right? Instead of. You don't even want to know how I play Iron Man. <laughs> I, I learned a long time ago. Play it the way that you can play it. Don't don't worry about the guy who plays it a different way. As long as you're playing the same notes in the same time, it doesn't. The guitar can play notes many different ways. Uh, just 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 play it the way you want. Like a, a lot of people play right. I go open G. Exactly, let's stretch. How dare you? I just gonna say that if Randy lived, he would adopt my way of playing it. And he would probably write me a nice note saying, you know what? I was wrong, bro. I'd say, you know what, Randy? Apology accepted. He'd probably be playing a an an ear T guitar too. <laughs> I'm just I'm just going with the percentages. <laughs> I do still have my EB-8 Stealth. It doesn't have any strings on it. It doesn't have a trem on it. It's uh, still got the pickups in it, though. Uh, it doesn't have the nut on it. Uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna say that that project's probably gonna finish up in 2026. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just playing it for say he probably would. I'm still waiting for my note from Angus. Come on, buddy. Sub <laughs> Cosme. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Yeah, Ben's right on that. Sometimes you you, you do it to avoid copyright. I, I remember what's so funny is uh, Tone King, he had a friend saying, oh, I keep getting copyright strikes. And he goes, well, just play the riff like not, just it sounds like it, but not like it. And he did it. And every comment was like, dude, that's not the way it's played. <laughs> you cannot win. <laughs> What happened to it? I started working on it and then, you know, uh, just ran out of interest. <laughs> Gotta remember that that's a Chinese EBH. That guitar was $136, so. I actually, I can't sell it because it's a Chinese copy. It's illegal to sell those. In fact, the place I bought that, they're not, they haven't been in business in like six years or seven years. I think they went under in like 2015. I got that from Trade Tang. Remember Trade Tang? I think they went under in like, let's see, I got that in 2010? Could have been 2011, early 2011. And uh, they were out of business by, they, they closed, and they were a massive place too. They used to have like 150,000 guitars listed. Seriously, like 150,000 listings. And uh, yeah, they went under. And so DH Gate, AliExpress, they're pretty much the only ones left. Um, but even there, they, it, it's all, they've really cracked down. The one thing you can still get from them, though, are the novelties. You can still get wackadoodle guitars, right? Where like, the headstock looks like the body. It's like literally a Gibson Les Paul custom headstock body, and the and the body is like literally the headstock, right? The reverse, like stupid crap like that. Um, I think they do a lot of the acrylics on there too. You can still get the acrylic stuff, it seems, but uh, I don't know. I haven't been on in a couple of years now. I wouldn't even know. Last time I looked, they. They didn't seem to have too much, like maybe 15,000, 20,000 instruments. Hey, what's up, Johnny? Ben says, yo, your chips came from Trade Tang too, yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was sort of a thing for a hot minute. I know, 150,000 guitars. <laughs> it's true, though. You'd go on there, you'd go to, like, guitars, how many listings? It'd be, like, literally 150,000 listings. Crazy. That's because, remember, they ran, like, eBay, right? It was all independent sellers. You'd see a lot of the same photos over and over and over again, all watermarked with every. It's the same photo, but they would watermark it for their, um, you know, uh, a store. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Ron. Early today. Acrylic 
electric guitars can become noisy? I'm not sure what you mean. Like, I'm not sure what you mean. Like, they can pick up more interference because of the acrylic? I'm not sure about that. Or it's like someone else says from like static electricity. I don't know how the, because you remember the, the um, it's still the standard electronics, right? The only thing about acrylic guitars is they weigh a friggin' ton. They make a Randy that's short money. I think they make a Randy Rhodes. Oh, let's take a look here. Hold on. We'll go to the old Sweet Wada. And then... Um, let me go to Guitars Electric. Give me a second here. Solid body electric. And then Jackson. And we can go here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not at $12.99. Let's go to uh, price low to high. Wow, they make it. They actually make a guitar that's less money than the one I'm playing? That's. That's shocking. That, that's what you're hearing right now. This one here. Again, if you want to buy it, use the link. I think, is that a hardtail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I almost feel like they should have done that with this one. It's like, why even attempt? Just, just go hardtail. You wonder if it's cheaper to actually put this on than the hardtail, but I don't know. Good looking guitar though, right there. All right. 329. That looks to be it. Uh 189. All right, and so then here's the same thing. Okay. So it looks it looks like you got a Pretty, again, out of, out of stock. Out of stock there, hot shot. A two-thirds, oh, it's a mini. It's a minion. Yeah, you know, a, a me and minion guitars don't, we don't work. I'm a bit oversized. I'm six feet tall and, uh. And a, and a, and a, and a big dude. Now that, now I like. That's full size. Three twenty nine. What do they say about this uh, up here? Do they say it's a? Uh, can I give you a bleep blurp? Anything? Nothing. They don't really, do they? In other words, they're saying the body shape is dinky, but they're not saying it's a seven eight size or it's a smaller body. But I always, I always understood the dinky to be a seven eighths. Amaranth is the fingerboard. Portlay chalk fin, little mother of toilet seat. Twenty five and a half, nut width one point six eight. What's the neck shape? Speed. Speed shape. So, so what shape is that? It's speed, bro. Speed shape, bro. Uh, body is poplar. That's a very poplar wood these days. <laughs> so that's a also yeah, it's also a bolt on. It's good looking purple though. Nice perps, right? Uh, what's his name? Knows what I'm talking about. Uh, ben Ben Combs. He knows the perps and the terps. And when they're together, it's it, 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 uh, the marriage of perps and terps. Uh, you got the poplo, you got your gloss. Pavo purplo. Pablo purplo. 
five and a half. Uh, the difference is, is this is going to add the um, the locking trim, right? You get a the lock now, which could go a long way to, for this tuning stability, a long way. Uh, I don't like that there's no bar. Uh, it, you know, when they don't put a bar on this, you get tuning problems. I, I know that it's a tilt-back headstock, but this tilt-back isn't all that tilted. This isn't like a 13-degree back. You're lucky if that's an 8- or 9-degree back. So I, I worry that it doesn't tilt hard enough back to get the strings down on the surface of the nut. I'd probably add a bar to that. I'm, I'm shocked that so few people are using the bar. You, it, there's a reason that that was part of the spec. Just keep the strings in tune when clamping. Kind of like that Randy, though, huh? What do you think, Randy? Perps? Uh, I already got this one. You like better? You like perps? You like the rando? Rando and white? Nah, I don't like that. I like this much. I like the black much better. Not even a contest. Black much better. Especially with the satin. Um, perps. They got in the blue. Nah, no. I, what's the point? This is not a guitar that lends itself to a natural look, I feel. The only person playing that is Nuno. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, it, this is really, right? It's like, would you, would you build a Ferrari out of wood? I mean, come on. Again, I, I don't mind the matte black. I just worry it's going to get shiny in spots. All right, wherever you uh, have constant contact with it, around the knobs, around the fretting area, where your arm hits, over time that'll wear. I kind of like perps. Oh, God. And that's, well, that one's in stock. How about uh, the neon orange? Which... If you get if your car breaks down, it doubles as a cone. That's always nice. And don't forget, you got one of those big picks. You got a wheel chalk right there. I already got the blue. Uh, I'd probably have to go between the the perps and the and the red. I tell you, that red's looking pretty sharp. Looking sharp, that kid. Oh uh, yeah. Huh. Both looking pretty good. There's the, actually it's, it's orange. Orange. We'll open this in a new tab. Oh, the perps. Both look pretty good. Hmm. <laughs> Paint it yourself, <laughs> breadboard. Uh, I guess it's an orange finish. I know where is the red finish? How come they can't do a nice for a nice like um, fire engine red? You know, fire. But they don't. They doing perps. They doing orange. Again, you get into more satin. Looks like they make a lefty in the higher one. Do they make a lefty in that? I'm not seeing a lefty in this one. Your first lefty. How oh, many just coming in? The first lefty appears to be this one here. I'm getting the Randy and lefty. Yeah, you got to get into the boy. Lefties are always, always under the gun. You know, they can't, can't. Can't get the stock. I, I tell you, that Adrian Smith looks pretty good. Pretty uh, standard super strat. Oh, yeah. Just a standard sort of super strat kind of look. Now you're getting into, like, Ibby, Ibby country. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. 
there's your red soloist. But is this neck through at this price point? When you get to 700, am I, am I going to get it? I'm not getting a bolt on, am I? No, no. Okay. No, that's cool. That's cool. No bolt on, neck through. That's nice. That's basically like a soloist. You know, in fact, it is. They, they call it a soloist. Again, though, I don't like the light brown fretboard. This, I feel like the guitar in my hand has a darker fretboard. Why? If anything, this should be dark as night, you know? That's, a, that's supposed to be the soloist, bro. Ugh. Look at that. Very light fretboards. Not a fan. It was wrong then. It's wrong now. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're just spending more, <clears throat> more money, more money, more money. Yeah, it just keeps going up and up and up and up. But uh, you know, three twenty nine, three sixty nine, three sixty nine, five ninety nine. Well, Adrian needs to get paid. And then six ninety nine. Yeah. I just again I can't get over the the light fretboard. You know, versus even this. You know? Take a page from your cheaper guitars. I think that looks a lot better. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> How much is the Meteora? I think they're, are they a thousand bucks? That's a good question. Hold on. Uh, do, 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 Eleven hundred. There they are. Eleven fifty. These are the new ones, right? Right with fade like that. I'm pretty sure that's the recent one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think of the Silver Sky, I think I like the Buttercream. They call it Moon White, but it, it's Buttercream. You know, instead of the the Dragon Fruit or the Evergreen. Oh, man. How long have I been going? Oh, geez, it's already 4 o'clock. Wow. This day flew. This afternoon flew by. Yeah, eleven fifty. <laughs> Operators are standing by. <laughs> They're all without case. Yeah. <laughs> But do you really need a case? You throw them in a bag. Eight p.m. So you got to be in the UK. You have to be on Greenwich Mean Time. Two hours. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I've been going a couple of hours, and I gotta I gotta prep for tonight. So, uh, which basically means I gotta get some dinner. <laughs> Good old Ireland. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna uh, I'll wrap this show up, uh, and we will. Uh, I'll see you definitely in a week, without a doubt. Uh, but maybe late night tonight. You never know. It could happen, maybe. 
We'll see. And uh, I know, get some sleep. Exactly. <laughs> get a little bit of sleep. And, uh, you know, get up and, uh, and do it all over again. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to take off. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. And uh, maybe I'll see you later. Maybe I won't. How's, how's that for a commitment? Uh, you never know. It could happen. Uh, you know, let's just all agree that this guitar looks and sounds good, but the tuning kind of blows. Though, I have to say, it's been behaving during this show. Um, but yeah, if I... All right, you know what? I'm going to treat you to one thing before I go. I'm going to put the whammy bar in and use it once, and I'll give you a taste of what it's like. All right? This is what you're... This is because it's at the very end, and I won't have to sit here tuning it up. So right now, but anyway. Not even tuned. You know what? It's not going too bad right now. Did I fix it? It's a little out, but not too bad. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually not too, too bad. Uh... That's it, it's it's out, but it's not nearly as bad as it was. See that's why. See again, that's sharp. Now it's flat. That's usually how you fix it, is you just do it. No, that's not bad. The highs are... Sounds in tune. That's a little loud. Those, it's the high strings. Those sound out. Especially that high. Yeah, it's a better than I remember it, um, but it's still not, a, I think, as, as stable as the Kramer, if I'm being honest. All right. Tuning is overrated, exactly. What do you need? What do you need? <laughs> Look, a little, you're a little above, a little below. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> 
Three strings usually, right? The other, right, the other stay in tune. Right, right, right. Close enough for punk. Exactly. <laughs> All right, dudes. Well, there you go. No, you rock. I will, uh, I'll see you later. Maybe today, maybe not. Definitely in a week. All right, dudes. Thanks for hanging out. Rock on. <laughs>